Hello everybody, in today's video we are going to be installing the Super Penda Mini Plus Upgrade Kit using Prusa Mini, this upgrade kit which just consists of the Penda probe and 10 zip ties back in there, my iFixit screwdriver set which is really nice, and a little bit of uh, grit and determination, these things are kind of annoying to take apart. So the first thing you're going to want to do is raise up the uh, hot end carriage here, so that way we can have a little easier access to the probe. So why might you want to install this Super Pinda kit? So if you bought your Prusa Mini before, let's say August or so, I'll put the correct date up, your probe probably looks like this, like mine does, a little yellow thing. This is the PINDA, which I'm not sure what that stands for, but it's basically, it's a proximity detector. So on here, right under here, is a steel sheet, or a conductive sheet at least. And so what this sensor does is the clo as, as it gets close, it'll detect, the, it'll detect the surface, and that allows you to level based off of the different readings that it collects. Which is good, that's how that's how a bed leveling system works. Yeah, that's fine. Problem with this guy is that it's temperature sensitive. So if your room changes temperature drastically or even, even a small amount, this will no longer be accurate and your prints will no longer be accurate and they won't stick or it could even be bad and it can gouge into your bed as you can see through here. It's gouged into the bed quite a bit and actually uh, I didn't notice how bad it was on one of my prints it got so bad that back here you can see if I come around here right there it's cracked and that's why that zip ties there by that point I just had enough so I contacted support told them my probe was broken because while well, it's digging into the bed it's doing all this stuff they sent me out this new one, which I read into a little bit, and it's supposed to take care of all those issues. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and install that now. So what I have in this uh, driver is a 2.5 millimeter um, hex head, or Allen head, Allen key. Yeah, the printer come with one, but I just like using this. It's a bit nicer. So you loosen this bolt down in here, which is right next to it. That'll loosen up this guy allows you to twist and turn. Actually before I do that I am going to switch the power off and back if I can find it. There. So now there's no power so we can't short anything. So just loosening this up. Once this bolts loose so this is able to turn now and up here is another bolt that'll keep that keeps this uh, wire loom in here. So we're going to loosen that guy up too, so that way we can take this wire loom apart since you need to in order to take out the pinda. So I'm just going to put these off to the side as I use, as I get, take them out so that way I don't lose them. But I don't think too many of them are going to need to come out. So now this guy needs to come off, which the wires should be able to slip through that there. So as you can see, the wires just slip through. Makes it real easy. And another thing that they did with these, with this Super Pinda, so as you can see, yeah, that looks all nice and uh, secure. And as you come up here, it just turns into loose, loose uh, wires. So this cable actually doesn't continue; it just turns back into the strands. Whereas on this one, as you can see, that whole thing is covered in that protective uh, outer insulation. So that's supposed to help it last longer. So now I'm just going to unscrew this guy. It makes it a lot easier to unscrew that now that it's not fighting against the wire loom. Something I just discovered, you can actually just sort of push it down and up. I should have realized that, I mean I've done this before. Um, well, I've had to adjust the height of this sensor when I first got the machine. So, now what we got to do is fish it all the way out of these, and back here there's a zip tie that needs to be cut, and another one down here that needs to be cut, and then we'll go down into the base and plug in the new one. 
So rotating this around, you can see there's a cable tie there. That one might be harder to see, but he's there. And then down here is just the retaining. You put that on when you assemble your machine, so yeah. So there's just those three. Here, here, and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those apart now. So I've cut all those zip ties, and now all I gotta do is pull apart this sheath. Then we're gonna go in here and take apart, pull out this guy's connector, and just plug in the new one. Then it's just to reverse all that, and you got yourself the upgraded sensor. So now that we're down here at the base, where are we at? There we go. So now that we're down here at the base, what we're gonna do, just undo these screws, so that way we can get in there. Oh, there was a spot for a second screw, but I guess hmm, there wasn't one. So there, now that's a part. Just pull off the rest of that. Let's come up here, grab our sensor, our old one. Come down here, find where he plugs in at. Right down in there, stupid little retaining clip. There we go. There's a little uh, retaining clip, or however you want to call that, and it just pops out. That's the Minda. This thing doesn't want to focus, but there we go, Minda. So, he's out, piece of junk. Gotta put him in the TF2 coffee cup. So now, we're gonna install the Super Pinda. Easy, just plug it in. Should be easy, just plug it in. There we go. So he's plugged in, and now all we gotta do, kinda route the cable the same way as the other ones. Bring it over here. So try to get it so that way the, the, the sensor is a little bit above the nozzle, just sort of eyeball it right now. And then tighten down that threading a little bit. We're going to do a fine adjustment later, so don't worry about it, as long as it's close. I'm going to make it so that way I can still move mine up and down, but I want to get this screw somewhat tight. Yep. We'll call that good. Now, what we got to do, we got to run all these wire loom back together. That's going to be annoying. So what you're going to do is you're just going to open this guy up. This is the fabric you pulled off of the wire loom. And you just got to put all the wires back through it. And then we're going to zip tie it. All right. So I've gone ahead and got that all re-loomed. That's probably the hardest part just because it takes so long. And then, as you can see, I have moved this all the way up to the top. I've moved it all the way over. That's that way you can get the right amount of wire loom. So what you're going to want to do, is you're going to want to come in here, give it a little bit of bend down there and a little bit of bend up here. So that way you got enough slack here and enough slack there, just ever in case. Then you're going to come in here and put some new zip ties in. You're going to route those through. There's holes there, there, and there. I'm just going to route those in real fast. So I've got all those zip ties in. Now all I gotta do is give it, I'm actually going to put this lid on first, down here. I'm just gonna route these over here and put this lid back on. So I've gone ahead and got that put in. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. Screwed it in. And now we are going to route this guy here. Make sure you go slow when you move these, otherwise you might damage some electronics. So I'm going to put it all the way out here and see how much room I need. That seems about right. Yeah, that seems good. So I am now going to just tighten down these zip ties, put back on these pieces over here, and we'll call it good. So as you can see, I've got it zip tied in. I've got this bolt in over here, 
So that guy's back in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate him around. Ooh, as you can see, our pinda probe fell way down. I'm gonna rotate him, push him up here. We're come down here to move axes, and it might not let us. Yeah, so we're stuck up here technically. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to calibration, then I'm going to. Make sure that nothing crashes. I'm gonna hit auto home. And once this gets down fairly low, I'm going to turn the machine off so that way it doesn't finish. I just don't feel like doing all of that by hand. So I would have had to rotate that all the way down. Not technically the safest way of doing it, but yeah. So we're gonna pull that guy out, push him over. We're gonna rotate this. Actually, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a zip tie. I'm gonna use a bigger zip tie just because I can. There we go. So we've got ourselves a zip tie, which you can also use a credit card. Don't use a credit card or gift card or whatever that you want to keep because this will probably remove the magnetism. So just rotate this down. And I have this, that way I can still pull it up and push it down relatively easily. So we're going to rotate this and just keep twisting it down. We're going to go until that, until we can't anymore. So that's about there. There's a little bit of plastic there, but that should be good. So now that guy's held in place. So what that does is it makes sure that this sensor is a zip ties height above the hot end. So now, while that's being held down, we're gonna tighten this guy down. There we go. And, voila. I'm gonna put this camera down for a sec. So what I did was I actually just went ahead and cleaned off the uh, that plastic that was on the nozzle and redid that, and so I would recommend doing that. It just seemed like it was a little, this was a little too low from what I had it at last time. So, there we go. That's installed now. So hopefully that will be all we need to do. I will check real fast to see if I need to update the firmware. I'm not sure if I do or not. So I couldn't find anything about upgrading the firmware and I don't think there is a new firmware out from when I have last upgraded this. So what I'm gonna do now is just do a first layer calibration. So once that starts, I will get back to you. Okay, so that went pretty well, wasn't too far off, um, so now what I'm going to do, I actually really don't like this first layer calibration thing, I don't think it works very well, so I'm going to take all this off and I'm going to, no, no, I've got this box which has a really flat first layer, so we're going to print that, at least the first layer and we'll see how that comes out. So my room says it's about 65, 70, 74, 73 degrees in here. And by midnight it'll probably be way less and by tomorrow morning it'll probably be like 60. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to print this guy. We're going to see how he turns out. So we'll start this print. It'll be calibrated for this temperature, 60, 74. And then once this base of it finishes, we'll see uh, we'll see how good this first layer is. Already it looks way better than it did last time. My, uh, with the old temperature sensor, let's have something to point with. This point here was printed perfect and down there it was smashed flat and over here it was barely touching. It was awful, this thing, it just was a piece of crap. So I'm so glad that they got the new sensor, but kind of pissed that it took them so long. So it looks like I need to adjust it a little bit. There we go, we'll try negative 640. So I'm just gonna let this print, and I'll be back. So I'm not sure if you can see that, it says about 70 degrees. It's a little cooler over here, um, just because my window's right there and so it gets colder. Uh, I picked up my machine and moved it over on top of the fridge and I just started a print and well as you can see it's actually printing so that's nice. If this was the other probe it would not have uh, would not be printing this. It would probably be messed up so that's nice. I'll let this finish and then we can compare the two. Yeah.